Rumors of CM Punk and Brian Danielson, Dave. What's going on that we know of? Oh, gosh. Uh, where do you want to start? What do you want to talk about? Well, CM Punk and Brian Danielson. Okay, so... Um, I don't know if CM... I, don't, I mean, I don't know if either of their two are signed right now. I know that... I would not be surprised if Brian Danielson signed but I do not know that to be a fact. As far as CM Punk, I know that they've been talking to him for a while. Uh, I know they've been talking to Brian Danielson for a while as well. Um, as far as with Brian Danielson, so was, was, with, as far as Brian Danielson goes, I'm pretty sure that whatever decision, I mean, there's a lot of factors that were going into um whatever decision he would make and it was uh new japan aw and wwe i don't think that he considered anybody else um he has loyalty to wwe um loyalty to vince mcmahon um has a lot of friends in wwe at the same time i think that in the end the company with the relationship with new japan was going to be the favorite to get him and since it appears now that we've had a long time and Nikon was trying to make that deal and apparently he did not um, and just watching the show tonight watching a New Japan Championship change hands on an AEW show and seeing uh, you know Hikaleo who's a New Japan guy and Yuji Nagata and other guys that are probably going to be coming whatever uh, it does appear, it doesn't appear, um, obviously AEW has a relationship with New Japan, and it does not appear that that is going to change. So that, in fact, would make AEW the favorite. I know that you have said before this ever got out that you had heard that he was going to debut in New York, and it's been reported today that he's going to debut in New York. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's true, but I certainly cannot confirm that. But, um, but yes, yeah, so like, like from day one, uh, the company that has the relationship with New Japan was the favorite. And that's why I didn't know who the favorite was all along because, you know, both sides wanted that relationship with New Japan. And, um, that's basically it. When, when Tony Khan did that thing, which actually would have been like about, I think it might have been the day I reported it or the day after, um, about um you know kind of that promo on nikon when i saw that promo i said he's got to be pretty damn confident about the relationship with new japan because if wwe gets the relationship with new japan after this promo he could look really bad and so um but it looks like i mean from all from all visual it looks that way and so um you know, that's a huge signing for, for uh, AEW if, in fact, that is the case. It's huge. Um, and, um, I mean, just, just all, you know, when you look at it, I mean, without a doubt, um, I mean, the COVID played a big part in it because I, I believe that, that Brian Danielson would have been in New Japan already uh, because, you know, he's been free and clear since April 30th. You know, he, you know, he could have gone in May. But with the COVID situation and him having young kids, I don't see him sitting in a hotel room for two weeks waiting to do a Tokyo Dome show. It just doesn't make sense at, at the state at, at his stage of life. I didn't see that as much of a possibility, and he has not been to New Japan yet. And he didn't need to sign with AEW to work New Japan. He could have done that on his own. But um, obviously, with the relationship with AEW and New Japan, it makes for things being much easier politically plus he was going to go with with one or the other i mean he was he's not going to retire um and AEW. i mean there's advantages with AEW. um i would even say i would if i was him i think i would say i would lean in that direction for a number of reasons um you know one of which is it's just all new matches um it's just a new fresh thing and he can go back to WWE, you know, in however many years. Um, 
the deal is for um, if he's not happy. And if he's happy, he doesn't have to go back to WWE. And um, I mean, look, he, he was going to make money. You know, it was like there was no bad decisions for him. He was going to make money either way. He was going to be happy or uh, a, the management would attempt to make him happy because he's a star in either place. Um, WWE really wanted him. Obviously, they really don't want AEW to have him either, but they did want him. Um, and uh, I don't know. You got anything to add? Well, I mean, I was always pretty skeptical from day one that there was ever going to be a WWE New Japan deal. Because, especially nowadays, if you look at New Japan and the deals, I mean, they got deals with everybody. I mean, yep. there's going to be New Japan people at the Impact, uh, the TNA, their uh, AEW, Mexico. They got New Japan Strong here in the U.S., and there's guys coming from different promotions for New Japan I, Strong. I, I, I'll, t I'll tell you what, the, the, the Mexico thing is an interesting one because um, it's just interesting because that advertising on that for um, Bound for Glory where they advertised New Japan and AAA together uh, for that show, uh, CMLL cannot be happy with that i mean cmll hates triple a and they hate anyone who works with triple a and um you know it's you know they they cmll claim you know claimed i mean they publicly severed their relationship with ring of honor and it wasn't a, in that case it wasn't over triple a if they had used triple a talent they, they would have severed the relationship it was actually over ring of honor talent working for federacion which is the same thing in the sense that it's a rival of cmll so, um, I mean, Daniel Bryan always wanted to work for Dan Daniel Bryan. Bryan Danielson's always wanted to work for CMLL, but um, and he's based still. But you know, the CMLL that he wanted to work for—that's not CMLL, today's CMLL. That's not today's CMLL. He missed he missed his window on that one. Um, I mean, I used to. I mean, CMLL on Friday nights. I mean, that I used to watch that thing religiously every Friday night before there was a SmackDown and everything like that. And it was my most fun thing watching that show because it's. Old, it was the closest thing to old school wrestling, um, with the old school crowds. It was big, lively crowds, and and um, you know, really good action matches, fun matches, um, very very entertaining. Just the whole atmosphere at Arena Mexico back then was fantastic. But um, you know, that you know, even without COVID, the the power struggles and things like that, they lost. You know, all of you know, pretty much all of the key talent. Um, with a few exceptions. I mean, they lost Dragon Lee, who was one of the best guys there. Um, Roosh was the most charismatic guy there. And that was their doing. You know, that wasn't like those guys left. I mean, those guys were fired for, um, you know, whatever, wanting to work with other people. It was just a real childish. But it, but it is how CMLL is. You know, I mean, I mean, Dragon Lee is, believe it or not, he got he got fired for working PWG Battle of Los Angeles. Um, because Bandito, who was at one point working for CMLL, but at that point I think was an AAA guy and may, you know, was on the show as well. And they basically told their guys if, 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 uh, PWG is going to use any AAA guys, none of you guys can come. And Dragon Lee really wanted to work that show, um, you know, because, you know, everybody wants to work PWG once in their life, you know, or, 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 you know, Battle of Los Angeles is like a big, big deal to a lot of people. And, you know, I mean, that was what happened. I don't think that he expected they would fire him over it. But, um, you know, and it wasn't the end of the world for him. He he already had a, a, a very nice Spring of Honor deal. He had a New Japan deal, which with COVID ended up like he hasn't even been there. But, you know, he had a deal there. So it wasn't going to hurt him either way. But, um, you know, that's just, that's just the CMLL situation. So I don't know. You know, I don't even know if Daniel Brian Danielson wants to work CMLL anymore. But but New Japan, you know, even though they're not the New Japan they were two years ago either, um, they still have the talent. And um, you know, um, I'm sh you know that that was that was a the work in New Japan was something he's been wanting to do for a while. So, well, with uh, this, he's got he's got New Japan that he can work for. He can do if he happens to want to do a show for Strong. If he wants to do something with somebody in Impact. If he wants to do something, I mean, all of these doors are open. All the doors. If be you're going to AEW, if you go to yeah. WWE, there is there is the no door open. Yeah, New Japan might be open if, 
but that you know i mean like the one reason that i thought that um you know it, it was a it was a possibility is because look nikon look at the deals this guy's made nikon made the freaking fox deal i mean not it wasn't him all by himself i mean you know stephanie and and paul levesque and vince and all them were all involved but nikon is the one who got the deal done and got the terms that they got and Nikon was the one who got the terms. I mean, like they'd have been on USA either way, but Nikon got those terms. Those were, you know, those were the biggest deals that WWE's ever had since he became president. He got made the Peacock deal, so you just can't count him out. But um, you know, it says something as far as like w when it came to New Japan. Um, you know, there is for whatever reason, um, you know, there. They didn't they didn't want to make the deal. There was definitely talk. And I don't know that it's dead, um, but I sure haven't heard anything about it and not hearing anything about it. And it's been so long um, knowing that it was paramount to make that deal months ago and to get it done as soon as possible. And it didn't happen. Um, that tells me that, they, you know, and I mean, they're, the WWE has gone to New Japan before. And and, you know, I mean, and a lot of people don't know they've gone to a lot of companies before and deals and usually. Well, in almost every case, with the exception of like the press, uh, progress and WXW and, and, and some of them, um, pretty much most of those things never happen. Um, you know, there's talk and it just doesn't happen because, you know, maybe the promotions know that when, you know, for the people who've worked with them, um, track record wise, it's, it hasn't always ended up in the best. And um, I think that there's always been a thing in New Japan with this New Japan of, um, you know, that, that WWE is the rival. They're not the friend. And that's something to overcome as well. Although they had the same attitude towards AEW. And, and obviously they are working with AEW. So, so CM Punk? Yes. Um, you know, I, I had... Um, so, I, I... Okay, so going back... Um, in May, I had been told that there were four, uh, signings, two, not like two somewhat big and two huge, but none of them had been, none of them, none of them were signed, but that, um, there was confidence that they would be signed. And I knew the two of them were um, Alistair Black and um, Danielson. I knew that they were two that were being talked to, um, that they really wanted. Um, and the other two, I presumed, were Punk and Andrade. Uh, pretty sure of Andrade. Punk was a name that had been floated around. It fit the category. I mean, as far as guys who fit the category that were also available, it was, it's, you know, it's not a long list when you're talking about giant superstars that are free agents. I mean, you know, who, who is there that, that you could, that, that can wrestle? You know, I mean, these were going to be wrestlers. And I mean, it was like CM Punk, it, you know, Dave Batista, Brock Lesnar. I knew one can be Dave Batista because he's in Hollywood and, um, he'll, he'll never go against Vince. Um, although I guess I suppose people have said that before Jericho said that too and and he was there um, But Batista, you know when the whole thing started with AEW He made it very clear that he was not interested, you know, and people had talked to Batista from the from the start and uh, Lesnar is you know a free agent and you know, whatever, but I just felt that from a cost standpoint uh, There's no way that Lesnar made any sense um, So that kind of left punk you know, as the guy, but I mean, I didn't know no punk, but I did know, um, you know, I did hear that they were talking and stuff. So, um, and they are or were, um, no one's denied anything as far as anything goes. No one's confirmed anything. So I would go, you know, I mean, as far as, is there a deal that I don't know? Um, I've already thought that, uh, if they do it, you know, obviously you're looking at Chicago, right? But I don't, again, I don't know that any, I don't know that, that any, there's any deal with punk, but, um, I would, uh, I know a lot of people go debut him at all out and I would debut him in the Wednesday before all out. Um, if, especially if you're going to do a surprise, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do a surprise with him because I think that, uh, I think that the best thing would be on that Wednesday dynamite in Chicago 
and do something on that show to lead to the pay-per-view and try to get a record pay-per-view number out of Punk's. I mean, he probably wouldn't do a match, but Punk's first, you know, tease something, you know, because it's like, I do believe that Punk is big enough uh, for show number one, his first time out, to help, um, you know, to do a, to, to swell that pay-per-view number to a pretty big degree. As far as long-term for either of them, um, Punk, it's hard, you know, Punk's in his 40s now. Uh, Brian's 40, but Punk's in his 40s. And uh, what's 44, 40, 43 probably, right? Is he 43 or 44? I'll find out. Yeah. But um, he hasn't wrestled for years. And, uh, you know, there's there's so much when it comes to Punk. You don't know where his head's at. You know, he's 43 uh, in October. You turn four, he turns 44 in October or 43 in October? 43. Okay, so it's 42 right now. I think the day after your birthday. Aren't you October 25? I'm October 24. Oh. October 26th October, this is his birthday. So October 26th. He turns 43. 30. Okay, so I mean, a lot depends on. There's there's so many factors here. Um, you know, again, working out schedule. Um, punk can be difficult to work with, um, and AEW is pretty cohesive. I mean, um, I haven't heard of a lot of problems. I mean, there's always problems, but uh, but none vocal. Punk can be vocal, but um, and you know there was. You know, so we'll see what happens with Punk. We'll see what happens uh, with uh, Danielson. But, um, you know, the only thing I know is Danielson uh, in the fall somewhere, you know. And as far as where, you know, I would certainly say AEW is the favorite because they got the New Japan deal. And if the, if Nick Khan can pull off the New Japan deal, unless this thing's already signed, which people are saying that, again, that it is, if it's already signed, then he's in. If Nick, if he's not signed and Nick Khan can pull off the deal, then I'm not as sure. In fact, I'd be leaning towards the other side, honestly. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work. Working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.